Sarasvath Institute, Bangalore. He is a scientist, basically a scientist. And his group, I understand, is actively engaged in research, especially in combining this spirituality and modern science. A large number of papers and books he has published in this respect. And it is a noted spiritual center. Noted spiritual center. Every day they have several programs, this and that. So let me invite him. But, uh, Dr. Bhakti Niskama Shanda to make her presentation. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> Thank you very much, uh, Professor Gopinathji and Dr. S. Albert. And uh, I express my gratitude and thanks for your kind invitation to. Please stick to, stick to time. Stick yeah. to time. 20 minutes, please. Yeah, my humble self. And uh, let me share the screen. I want to uh, be as brief as possible. Uh, just for small intervention, we today we had a birthday celebration of Dr. Bhakti Nishkam Shanta uh, just uh, a few hours earlier. So we wish him the best uh, and a very, very long life. So we all join, we all join. Similarly, our Professor Sebastian Velasheri also has his uh, birthday today. We wish to both of them. And all our prayers and a long life and a very, you know, very meaningful life. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Bhatt and uh, Dr. Gopinathji. So let me share the screen. So let us offer prayers before we begin our humble presentation. Om Jnana Timiran Dhasya Jnana Jnana Salakaya Chakshur Nilitam Jaina Tasmai Sri Gurave Namaha. So I offer my humble dhanda word to all my spiritual masters. So <clears throat> today, uh, specifically, I'm being asked to speak something about uh, yoga. Sai so was, you know, thinking to present something on science of tongue yoga. Generally, you know, we give importance to so much about uh, uh, physical yogas and uh, control of mind, all those things, but we often forget that uh, tongue is the cause of all kinds of you know, troubles that we are experiencing in this world. And uh, what is the way that you know, we can you know, control the tongue, uh, which is you know, causing uh, all kinds of difficulties to us in this you know, world of uh, suffering and illusion. So before we do that, we have to first understand what is yoga. Yoga is the connecting media between the finite and infinite through a uh, process of uh, self uh, introspection and uh, meditation. So actually um, finite by itself is you know, incomplete uh, as, a, as a soul uh, if uh, you know it wants to have some of its you know, desires or it wants to have some activities it cannot do that without uh, its uh, higher help that is coming from infinite. So in our ancient you know, scriptures, uh, like Vedic scriptures, we have this science of yoga and there are varieties of you know, different yoga systems that I explained. So before we go into that, we have to understand the three kinds of tendencies that we often find in this material world uh, that we observe. One is exploitation, another is renunciation, and third one is dedication. So what is exploitation? Exploitation is those activities that the finite or the living entities, jivas, they perform without having any connection with the infinite. Uh, it's a desires or its will. So. Uh, like we have the citizens of a particular country like India or USA, different countries. So being a citizen of that country, we have to follow the interests of the country uh, when we execute certain activities and we should not go against the interest of that you know, country's activities. If you go against the you know, country's interest and uh, then it will be considered as you know, something crime and our freedom is checked. So the karma is something like that that uh, uh, the living entities, when they are doing activities, uh, independent of uh, absolute. 
कृष्ण भूली से ही जीव अनादि बहिर्मुख अतए माया तारे दे संसार अधिक बाय फॉरगेटिंग कृष्ण वी आर डूइंग सो मेनी एक्टिविटीज बहिर्मुख मींस अदर काइंड्स ऑफ डिजायर्स दैट्स व्हाई वी आर गेटिंग एंटेंगल दैट इज द कर्मा इज अ काइंड ऑफ बॉन्डेज इट कैन बी पुण्य और पाप टू कैटेगरीज पायस एक्टिविटीज और इन पायस एक्टिविटीज सो फ्रॉम द कर्मा वी गेट सम रिएक्शंस that reactional reactionary plane to avoid that the jivas are very much tired of those reactions to avoid that they follow the path of renunciation and renunciation in the in the path of renunciation there are two categories uh, generally being classified in our scriptures one is path of jnana another is path of yoga so the path of jnana means it is a path of mental speculation karmis they are they are not having any interest in understanding what is the desire of the absolute how can i satisfy the uh, desire of the absolute those things are not there in the karmic activities they are basically busy with uh, immediate biological needs like ahara nidra bhaya maitra eating sleeping mating and defending but when we come to the plane of renunciation the gyan marga then they think there is something like god is there and they want to know about god they are their aspiration is to know about god that is gyan marga and they wants to understand it by their limited capacity uh, which is no, uh, in a brain power there is mental speculation mental power mental speculation so uh, you know in epistemology in our vedic science there is pratyaksha paroksha aparoksha adoksha jo aprakrita all these levels of you know uh, receiving knowledge are mentioned pratyaksha is the sense uh, you know direct sense perception paroksha means learning from uh, scriptures or you know persons who are experienced like sadhus uh, other individuals from their experience that is paroksha and aparoksha is uh, some kind of you know introspection and there we find you know the expression of sankracharya and his in his followers and gyan marga you know the uh, brahma the search for brahma Uh, they wants to know the reality uh, as the absolute you know the knowing is their interest and being they are finite by their limited capacity they can only realize this mass that uh, absolute is something very vast unknowable and we can only merge into that absolute that type of realization uh, they can have is gyan marga then the next level is the yogis like uh, uh, gyan is they wants to know absolute yogis they have a desire to see the lord so they are meditating in the heart uh, the the beautiful form that is known as parmatma it is actually kirudaksha vishnu who expands himself uh, as parmatma feature in the heart of all the living entities so that feature is there and they wants to see uh, the lord but both of these activities have to do with their own desires gyanis wants to know and yogis wants to see the absolute but there is another level that is known as uh, bhakti and the bhaktas uh, they are you know engage in science of dedication there they are not interested in just knowing or seeing that is not their direct interest their interest is to serve satisfy the interest of the absolute what absolute want what is the absolute desire and how can i fulfill that desire of the absolute by engaging myself in service of the absolute under proper channel a direction of the devotees so uh, accordingly the destinations of all these you know different practitioners they are different karmis are uh, perpetually entangled in getting many many bodies uh, in this uh, world uh, you know there are 84 lakhs of species uh, they are there they are entangled and according to their activities they enter into different species of life after leaving one body to enter into another body and gyanis they eliminate their individuality by merging into impersonal brahman absolute and yogis they can attain up to the stage of santaras like in the spiritual world in vaikuntha there are mountains there are rivers there are trees there are animals they are uh, happy by uh, by just seeing the absolute they don't have much uh, you know exchange uh, dynamic exchange active exchange with the absolute but the devotees they are not satisfied just by mere santaras they wants to have a active relationship with absolute like mother josoda here trying to tie the absolute with the rope 
so the advancements of uh, you know the spiritual plane they are classified in bhagavad gita uh, you know in a, in this in aspect also as uh, lord krishna as message will find in bhagavad gita yogi naam api sarvesam madgate antaratma sadhavan bhajate yoma same yukta tama matah so here krishna says in shrimad bhagavad gita 6.47 and of all yogis he who always abides in me with great faith worshiping me in transcendental loving service is most intimately united with me in yoga and in the highest of all so so many practitioners of varieties of yogas are there hatha yoga raj yoga uh, different types of you know uh, yoga practices that we see you know in india and now also it is very much popular in outside but they don't know what is the ultimate goal of this yogi in you know, a different yogi practices uh, the yogis yogic practices must ultimately culminate towards the interest of the absolute what is the interest of the absolute and how uh, our you know activities must be channelized towards satisfying that interest of the absolute so uh, you know i was thinking to introduce something about how we can go towards that kind of you know connection union with the absolute Uh, with the science of dedication, so we can be begin with a very simple process with this uh, science of tongue yoga. Actually, yogis they try to introspect. I am not this body. I am not these senses. I am not this mind. I am not this uh, intellect. I am not this ego. In this way, they go layer after layer. But devotees uh, they are also practicing bhakti yoga, and uh, there is a uh, very beautiful and joyful process. Uh, by which you know they can uh, overcome the plane of illusion and here one of the great acharya of gaudiya line brahma madhava gaudiya sampradaya sila bhakti vinod thakur he has said sharira avidya jal jadendriya tahikal jiva phele visaya sagare tar madhye jivavati lobhamaya sudurmati take jita kathina sansare krishna bada daya moy parivare jiva joy saprasad anna dilo bhai se annamrita pao radha krishna guna gao premeda ko chaitanya dita o brother krishna is very merciful to conquer the tongue he has given us his remnants accept this nectarian food sing the glories of radha krishna and with love call out chaitanya nitai so we have this tongue generally the tongue is attracted towards tasting so many things but we don't know how this you know tongue is putting us in so many difficulties uh, by those all things that we are you know trying to taste that is entangle us that is entangling us in so much you know karmic uh, things so uh, tongue is also used and uh, you know we are using it for you know speaking so many nonsense things so that is also bringing us into so much you know reactions so here sila bhakti vinod thakur says the, my dear brothers krishna is very merciful and to help us he has given us his remnants which is very well known in indian system that is known as mahaprasad we cook those things which is offerable to krishna uh, uh, those uh, in a uh, proper you know things that krishna has mentioned uh, in the scriptures in you know, explained us you know uh, rice vegetables all those things without onion garlic and we offer it with tulsi leaf to lord uh, by chanting some of the holy names of the lord like hari krishna hari krishna 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 hari 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 ram hari ram 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 hari hari and other holy names of the lord hari are there we chant it and we offer to him and after that offering we accept those remnants and this is the practice is being done from ages every time in our in our houses in past they used to follow this process somehow that process is missed now and uh, we are actually trying to practice uh, a process uh, like uh, uh, you know the food as if we have created all these grains all those things this is for our enjoyment and we are eating for our own purpose but krishna says in bhagavad gita if you eat those food without offering to me they are all pap on no bhakshan means you are eating only sins and you have to get reactions by eating those things because you have not created those grains you have not created this is not for your purpose and you can only kill a other living entities uh, if you can give life to those living entities so you cannot create the life so you have no right to kill only you can do all this cooking of rice and all these grains vegetables everything as a offering to lord krishna then those sins are gone and then those remnants if you take then it becomes service so this science is mentioned in our you know scriptures 
this uh, signs of connecting with the Lord within uh, this loving relationship. And we have seen the glories of Mahaprasadam uh, in so many, you know, holy places like Sri uh, Jagannath Puri Khetra. Uh, there are so many pastimes. We heard about those things. How great personalities uh, they, you know, released and fallen souls they also delivered by the grace of Mahaprasadam. And by taking Mahaprasadam, you get the strength to serve the Lord and your thoughts are purified from all kinds of misconception, exploitation, renunciation, all these, you know, conceptions will go. That is the you know, main thing. Your tongues must be used for releasing Mahaprasadam instead of you know, eating some nonsense things. And always tongues should be used to chant the holy name, uh, to glorify the Lord and his devotees, his abode. That should be the proper use of the tongue that our scripture says, not for any other purpose. Uh, we got this human birth and we must use the tongue for that reason. So, uh, generally, if people, they don't have faith about these all things, what is being told, because they are more busy with, you know, some other things like uh, karma and jnana and other, you know, uh, improper, you know, practices. And Bhishma Dev, one of the uh, 12 Mahajanas, he has told something to Yudhishthir Maharaj before leaving this world. He told, Mahaprasadi Govinde, Nama Brahmani Vaishnave, Salpa Punna Vitam Rajan, Viswasa Naiva Jayate. Those who do not have sufficient Sukruti, spiritual fortune, cannot faithfully honor Mahaprasadam, Lord Govinda, the holy name, or the Vaishnavas. So you can see in the society, people are doing so many activities, but they don't have proper honor for Lord's remnant, Lord Hari's remnants, and Supreme Lord Govinda and his holy name and, and his devotees, Vaishnavas, because uh, they have not engaged themselves and their belongings in the service of the Lord. Those who have enough of that, there are two types of Sukruti, Bhogunmukhi Sukruti and Bhakti Unmukhi Sukruti. Bhogunmukhi Sukruti means when you are distributing some cloth, some food, ordinary food, and you know some schools, hospitals, all these things you are opening, then you will get some facility because of those karma so that you can enjoy more. But Bhakti Unmukhi Sukriti means you will do such activities which will satisfy Lord and his devotees and his abode. Then you will get Bhakti, means the faith and devotion, all these things will manifest in your consciousness. So this is very important principle. Uh, if you see in the society, some people, they have, you know, immediately they can accept this process because they have enough Sukriti to take up that. But some, they don't have it. So this is the difference. You can see even in the you know, karmic things, ordinary sense, one teacher is teaching the same thing to all his students. Some students can easily catch uh, things and some cannot catch. Uh, teacher is teaching the same thing. Why they are you know, so much difference in their you know, way of receiving? Because their past karma does not allow them to uh, understand in the same way. Similarly, the faith is also different based on their past, you know, sanskar and sukruti. And these things are very, very important. That's why all the Vaishnava schools, Ramanuja, Madhva, and, you know, uh, Limbarka, Vishnu Swami, they have given emphasis of distributing Bhakti Unumukhi Sukruti to the souls in this world by uh, engaging the Jiva souls in uh, serving the prasadam uh, so that they can taste the prasadam. There was, you know, wide distribution of Mahaprasadam to the people. Uh, in the society in past, but now that process is uh, minimized, and uh, also people are and people were you know somehow uh, by hook or crook they have been engaged in chanting the holy name. Uh, people go out in the street and they chant the holy name, and uh, knowingly or unknowingly the jiva souls engage their tongue to chant this holy name, and they develop some taste in that way, and you know some sukruti manifest in their consciousness, and thus. They develop faith on these all aspects uh, which are necessary for the you know, illusion you know, living entities. See what uh, Bhakti Vinod Thakur has told, uh, you know, Sarira Avidya Jal Jadendriya Tahika. See, our body is actually the network of illusion and our senses are the enemies. That is throwing us into the uh, ocean of this type of, you know, Pisa means material ocean. And among those all, you know, what you can say, different, you know, uh, these enemies, this uh, jiva, the tongue, that is, you know, more dangerous thing. Uh, it is always tempting us 
to taste some nonsense things and say some nonsense things. So to win over that, Lord has given very joyful process. And if you can follow that, then that will be very much helpful. Uh, I wanted to give a brief uh, presentation because uh, the time is short. So I hope I have maintained the time. So thank you very much. Namaste. So thank you. Thank you, Dr. Bhaktin Skamashanda. So anyway, though it was uh, uh, not a short uh, brief, uh, but it was very, you know, uh, in, the, in the sense that uh, this, uh, this uh, new, this uh, tongue yoga, uh, that I uh, not familiar, that uh, concept, concept. But that concept, the underlying principle is that, uh, that uh, Mahamula Mantra in uh, this age, uh, that is to be chanted, recited, while one pursue his material life, I understand. Uh, but it is properly done, properly educated, because it is a hurdle. Because once we pursue this uh, in its uh, right way, it can purify our uh, you know, inner propensities, uh, negativity, and uh, one can gain punya, that way material and spiritual well-being can be attained. This way, proper dissemination and education, I don't think in spirituality, this is very much lacking, such a you know, correlation of this uh, spirituality or religion with our practical life, practical life. Instead, uh, highly superstitious uh, and uh, this, uh, you know, veiled things are being practiced. So it is a very uh, good thing that your institute has been doing, your spiritual center has been doing, I also understand. So much thanks, so much thanks. Thank you. So, uh, Thank you so let me invite uh, uh, Dr. Aditya Gupta, because we are uh, running short 